Mike Howard is 32 years old, a recently married balloonist from Manchester, England. While the volunteers scramble, Crew Safety Chief Steve Davis meticulously packs a couple of parachutes. Okay, Mike's ready to skydive if he needs to. But that's just backup. Mike plans to land the chair, and to do this, he will have to cut away the balloons in an orderly fashion. The volunteers are veteran balloonists and off-duty Air Force personnel, but even they find this event risky. However, no one is more fearful than Mike's wife, Renee. If something goes wrong right from the get-go, or if um, he's descending, there's a certain altitude that he comes to where there's no turning back, basically, and that's what really frightens me. <laughs> Despite the festive appearance of 700 red balloons, this feat couldn't be more dangerous. Rugged granite mountains surround the launch site, and if the winds sweep Mike into them, he'll be smashed into the jagged cliffs. To film this event, we have flown in this high-altitude llama, one of the only helicopters capable of reaching 18,000 feet. Once the balloons are stacked and fixed to a central point, they are attached to the chair. The Guinness rule says it can be any chair with, with legs, so we decided to use a director's chair. We've taken out the back so there's more space in the back for my uh, parachute so I can sit comfortably in the chair. After months of planning, after hundreds of laborious man hours, Mike Howard is ready to launch himself skyward. Zero minus three, two, one. Nothing. The decision to launch brings a heart-stopping moment of truth. Mike hasn't got enough lift to get off the ground. In an effort to lose excess weight, they remove the chair from the rig. It's still not enough. Wait 20 minutes. The solution? More balloons. But it's 7 a.m. in the middle of nowhere. Yet Mike's crew and the exhausted volunteers rally. They scrounge up more balloons from convenience stores and wedding halls, even gather leftovers from a little girl's birthday party. Mike is reattached to the rig for a second attempt. With a final boost from his crew chief, he begins to rise. At 30 feet, he cuts the tether. Mike, what's the story? Mike Howard's fate is in the hands of nature and the rigging he's attached to. He is now hooked directly to the balloons. No one has ever done this before. We have equipped him with a special camera to capture the experience. Let's have a look at the view, shall we? Lovely view. I'm floating at about 300 feet per minute. I'm just coming up on 500 feet. Let's have a look. Two separate chase crews take off into the desert. They can only guess where Mike is headed. He drifts west. He's going to drift back over the airport, and there are people there to pick him up. I'm heading south, Steve, and I'm climbing. Mike struggles desperately to reach 3,000 feet. Only then can he use his parachute. Anything below it, and I would have to use my reserve, and the chance of it actually opening in time is fairly slim. What do we got? Coming up on 2.5. Still climbing. Still, still climbing. At 2,500 feet, there is a problem. Mike has hit a temperature inversion, an invisible wall of cool air that he can't punch through. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to the altitude we need. You can see on the altimeter, 2,500. As he drifts helplessly towards the mountains, any hope Mike had of reaching 3,000 feet has been dashed. His new priority is getting back in one piece. Stuck at 2,500 feet with no hope of going any higher, Mike realizes that his parachute is worthless. This is not going to be a free fall because I didn't get enough altitude to do this safely. So we're going to land this, hopefully. <sighs> Legs have gone numb a little. Make sure the pin is still in. The pin is still in. There is an unforeseen problem. The smaller balloons have blocked the release lines. Using his survival knife, he begins frantically popping balloons in an effort to lose altitude. But the helium in the big balloons heats up as fast as he can pop the others, countering his efforts. Cutting across the sky at 30 miles an hour, Mike must land soon, or he can be smashed into the granite cliffs. Uh, the tops of those mountains, the highest peak on that mountain is 4,000 feet. We're trying to cut balloons here and descend. It's not working. 
still drifting helplessly, Mike is lucky enough to have the winds blow him around the highest peak. But another danger looms in the distance, high voltage power lines. Mike must land before he reaches them. He radios the chopper for help. Mike's a jet. Hey, Mike. Mike Howard's record attempt is now an air-to-air -air rescue operation. Calling on all his skills as a pilot, Jeff Kane uses the downwash of his blades to hasten Mike's descent. The helicopter is getting too close. Mike is engulfed by the balloons and totally blind to his surroundings. Twisting uncontrollably, he can only hear the chopper hovering above him. Can I get away? Mike, uh, the helicopter's causing you a lot of grief. Get him away. Get the helicopter away. Get the helicopter away. It's, it's all over the place. Leave me, let me to fly, will you? Okay, it looks like you're stable now. I'm descending now. After his successful action, Jeff Kane pulls his helicopter back as the chase vehicles close in. Mike descends rapidly over the mountain ridge. That's right, you're sliding off it. As Renee races along the road, Steve talks Mike through the perilous descent. Unable to stop himself, Mike is dragged through the rocks and cactus until he finally manages to cut away half of the balloons. Yeah, uh, we're almost right underneath you. Yeah, we're coming at you. He comes to rest on the desert floor with nothing more than a bruised ego. I saw this cliff face, and I didn't want to land on the cliff, because uh, that could have been nasty. So as I was coming down, I was bunny hopping over all these big boulders. Unfortunately, the balloon just sat at, like, 2,200 feet, and it would go up, and then it would come down. Mike Howard is not accustomed to failure. Yeah, very disappointed. Obviously, very disappointed. Don't like to fail. Um, but uh, perhaps we'll give this another go. Disappointed, perhaps, but lucky to be alive. There will be no new record for Mike. His dream of glory has been blown away by the desert wind. Mike assures us this can be done and that he will try this again.